Welcome one and all to another Techno Babble video, this time talking about resolution, pixel counting and everything in between. It seems that Remedy and the Xbox One have been at the heart of another scandal after its latest game, Quantum Break, hit outlets, reviews and analysis. Sadly, that didn't include myself. Now, after my preview and the team's own papers and work, the game targeted a 1080p output, but using lower resolution buffers to create the final output, as I covered then. But as I have not had hands-on with the game at all as yet, I cannot analyse the final game at that level. But the team have since released a statement this week when this all came to light. To summarise, their final 1080p output is a temporal reconstruction from four previous 720p frames which also support 4 times MSA to clean the edges up. Now not only is this a sorry situation and is the main reason I hold back on information like this until it can be confirmed and clarified, as the game will indeed now sell less due to this reason which is not only madness but deeply sad. In addition, the team are correcting that the simple pixel count of a single buffer or section of a screen grab is never as important as it appears to some. I talked about this over a year ago with New Techniques AA Solutions, making pixel counting both harder and less relevant than many think. Now allow me to explain in some depth. A game's frame is and has always been made up of many stages and samples and these all come in at different resolutions. This is true no matter if you run the highest PC spec you can buy and is simply the techniques needed for real time interactive performance that games require. You can very quickly reduce any machine to a crawl if you're not clever about these things, not just in rendering, but programming as a whole. So these intelligent compromises are not only needed, but are always evolving. And this generation, as you have heard me talk about before, this is no different. And let's be honest here, they're far more intelligent and hard than simple pixel counting the screen or even writing software to capture frame rates. Ooh, I know, insulting myself. Reconstruction, reprojection, MSAA, confidence improvements, multiple render targets, PBR are just some of the areas that have as much innovation this gen and here with Quantum Break is yet another scenario of just that. Now I have contacted Remedy for some detail on the method in use and how it all works but if and until I get a response I can only talk about methods known and what they have said based on the information I will cover this now in detail. The biggest and most vocal this generation was the technical talent over at Gridder Games with its launch title Killzone Shadow Fall, with it being one of the first games to split its single player multiplayer targets this gen with a 1080-30-1080-60 aim, it had to use clever techniques to hit these targets within the launch window. This meant that some clown decided to sue even though this entire case was built on incorrect information. This was that the multiplayer never output a full 1920x1080p image, which is incorrect as it did each and every frame. But how it achieved this was not, as per most games and indeed the single player. It is referred to as reprojection and others have called it interlacing, which to some extent it is, but only in theory, and unlike the fields that make up a complete frame in an interlaced image, this technique was based on the larger horizontal plane rather than the vertical, i.e. the 1920 section instead of the 1080 height. But what the hell does this mean in practice? Well, it means that unlike standard render frame and then discard, they decided to use that information to not only improve image quality with a temporal AA, but also reduce the rendering cost for each frame and help them achieve the 60 FPS targets easier. Now, to deliver this, they take three frames in a buffer along with a 1080p complete image to help with AA. These consist of the current frame, the last frame, and the frame before that. No more now, or just get dizzy. These pixels are then calculated with the odd pixels being created or reprojected from the previous frame's data which includes its motion vectors. This is the direction of travel thus expected location within the new frame and its colours to create the new odd lines. Remember the even lines all get rendered as standard. If all this fails then simple interpolation is used from the surrounding pixels nearest neighbour. This can at times create issues as you get some distortion or the stippled effect, much easier spotted on alpha effects like rain and such. But by and large it was a success and went by largely unnoticed other than a different AA choice being taken than single player which many thought. I wasn't analysing games back then. As you can see from my example this reprojection with each odd line being created from previous data or nearest neighbour. You can see where the interlaced idea came from but unlike the field creation of that image the final progressive display was 
was always a 1920 by 1080 image created from a 960 1080 render and the further 960 pixel columns created from data calculation. This would not have saved them 50% render time at all as all this calculation was not free but it did save them enough to have the higher multiplayer frame rate. This is a form of handling resolution and IQ in new ways, and it was a success, as you can see. Not a simple, it's a 960 by 1080 image resolution question. But this is not the same technique that Quantum Break has used, and is not the only one in use by any means, and I'm sure more to come. But this is reprojection, and didn't Remedy talk about reconstruction? Yes, it did. And thus the above method is only one way to skin a cat. Not sure why I don't want to do that, mind, but there you go. Now I did tweet about this this week to certain people as I talked about without even seeing the game. It was quite clear that reprojection was in place but I didn't want to talk about it in my preview video as I know how these things can escalate. Obviously that and I didn't have the game at all which also helps to do a full analysis. But let's move on to another method then. As I've talked about in my Uncharted 4 videos, the team also seems to be using temporal reconstruction methods within its pipeline to improve image quality. Shadow maps as we saw in previous games. The shader passes are not all within the single frame budget and instead spread across over multiple frames as an image builds up more information and quality. The team had aims towards adaptive tessellation with character silhouettes but instead seemed to be using an MSAA EQAA edge and colour sample in conjunction with its shaders to improve detail and clarity with a reconstruction method. The shadows in scenes are a clear sign of this as I've already covered before and in the multiplayer you can see the store information signs in certain areas along with what I covered in my E3 look last year that the information from the shaders is built up over time and added to. Both from additional information being added, prolonged shader passes and previous frames data to reconstruct the final image and improve it. But as the game is not even out yet, I cannot go into any detail on this, but the results speak for themselves. Now just to confirm, this does not mean the game is rendering below a full 1920 and 1080 geometry buffer, as it most likely is. Now another company using this method in more extravagant ways is Ubisoft. With Unity, reprojection was used in parts of the game's rendering for shadow maps and also Rainbow Six used it, what they call a temporal filter pass in the menu options on PC that is combined with a 2 times MSA sample to clean up edges that have been created from a half resolution. Yes, that means on PC if you set this option and PS4, the game is rendering a final 1920 by 1080 image at 960 by 540 which would normally result in a horribly rough and pixelated display, with the Xbox One rendering at half of its 900p resolution. But with its MSAA passes sampling edges and most likely colour, allowing this to greatly improve the image quality and stability, even if it can look slightly lower quality than a full native 1080 display, it certainly does not look that bad in practice and can improve performance by around 40%. An important factor when 60fps is the target on limited hardware, but this does create slightly more unstable results on ambient occlusion, lighting etc that can shimmer more and break up, and this is something I noted in my Quantum Break preview. To simplify, this is because the shader passes are reduced, therefore they're running on a lower resolution frame even though the depth is exactly the same as a full 1920 frame. The senior lead graphics programmer at Red Link Studio, Sebastian Alton, had a talk on their techniques at SciGraph last year, which was very interesting indeed. And I suggest you check it out in the link below and the article on the site. Now unlike the Rainbow Six method that is using MSAA to improve the geometry from its lower resolution in conjunction with post effects and temporal AA, it helps reduce the impact on the final result that is still a directly lower resolution buffer. This technique being described here is reconstructing the final 1080 buffer from a lower starting point with its ordered grid sampling. With the consoles for example a jittered or programmable sample point could be taken at sub pixel level to improve the results and choices further. The UV coordinates, tangent are all interpolated and by the team's own words are hard to spot. The performance gains on the given Xbox One samples show not only that is most certainly a great thing to do, but also that when performance improvements are quoted it all comes and affects parts of the pipeline and not the thing as a whole. And you can tell from this technique that it can be used at any resolution to achieve any external resolution and I believe it will be a big deal when we see the new consoles that I talked about in my video yesterday. This is the technique we will see to increase resolutions to the 4K target for everything even when the rendering is far below and will be far below on pretty much all the games on those consoles when they launch.
with the Red Link solution looking like an evolution of what's been used in Rainbow Six here. But again, this is yet another method, and not what I think we have in Quantum Break, as I think although the aims are the same, to increase performance, IQ and resource use, the methods can and do differ. From this and the team's statement, I think it falls somewhere between, maybe, using 4 times MSAA EQAA on a 1280x720B native buffer will smooth out the edges of geometry in play to deliver much cleaner lines and IQ than the pixel count would suggest. Then, by storing previous frames information similar to kill zone shadowfall as I've just mentioned above, the pixel vectors and colour can be used to improve the image and its interpolated sections as it is upscaled to the final 1080p output image. Now do not confuse upscaling with these options here as this is simply put a stretching of a smaller image to fit a bigger one. This is not what we're talking about here at all. With four frames needed to complete the final 1080p render means that in slow moving sections and cutscenes, along with its MSA sampling, delivers a much cleaner image than the pixel count suggests and based on the reconstructed nature of the display, it will move between the lower and upper bounds as you play. Now way back when I was talking about the Last of Us PS4 version to ship I mentioned a GPU driven pipeline and this is very much in use across many engines now, reducing draw calls, expanding density of worlds and freeing up vital CPU resource. Now this is a high end look at it, don't take it as all those things. Now here the aim is to reduce the shading cost on the GPU as this runs across a smaller buffer but the final image can be improved using multiple data samples and reconstruction from previous frames delivering the best combination of pixel quality over quantity and the team have chosen and I'm sure they know much better than me or anyone else which path to take. Now all these changes and solutions are always ever changing and in flux and happen to maximise the hardware in use and resource allocation to deliver the on-screen results simply calling a game 720, 900, 1080, 4K in and of itself is not worth as much as the final results. Even without hands-on, Quantum Break clearly shows that the team have maximised the engine and Xbox One well. All the physics destruction, time shifting powers, pyrotechnics, volumetric lighting, particles, screen space effects, real time global illumination are not only impressive but a much better use of the AOUs than simply pushing more pixels. It is always a compromise no matter the team or hardware in question and for anyone to dismiss the game, the team and what it delivers is not only missing the point of this but depriving themselves of a game that they could and probably will love. Now I'm sorry if all this was a little preachy, not my intention and I hope this helped to explain some of the techniques in use and how they differ but still aim for a similar result to save on processing time and ultimately to deliver better looking games across the board. That is the only point of game manufacturing and why these things even exist. And don't get this wrong, everything that happens that I've just gone through and much more that I can't go through in these kind of videos is very intelligent work by very intelligent hardworking people and it should never be taken down to simple pixel counting. Now I still do this and this is my point, I always add the information to that rather than just simply saying this is a 1220p game and then leaving it at that. I'm not accusing anyone else, don't turn this into a them versus us situation, that is not my aim. My aim is to talk about people's hard work, it's not about hating on this or fighting for one platform. I am a fan of technique, hard work and some of the talent that exists in these studios and that's simply what I'm talking about just here. But like I say, I'm preaching a little bit, so I do apologise. As always, I hope you guys and girls enjoyed this. If you did, then please hit the like and subscribe button as it really helps me immensely and it will help me create more work for you. If not, then please hit the down and tell me what you didn't like. If you did, then leave all your thoughts and feedback below. I always like to hear what you say. You guys and girls take care. And please check out my full detailed analysis of Quantum Break once I finally get my retail copy. And that'll include both Xbox One and PC. You guys and girls take care, and I'll see you very soon on the next one.